How's your energy, Southern Arizona? It is now time for the Friday Football Fever, one of the most in-depth high school football shows right here in the Crazy AZ. Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Culler. And I'm David Kelly. And Paul, it's the eighth week of the season of high school football here in Southern Arizona. It's also the last week of non-regional play for most of the schools in 4A and 5A. And it's their chance to make an impression since the first power ratings by the AIA will be released on Tuesday. As you know, it's never too early to start jockeying for playoff position. And Paul, two of the teams hoping to get on a run and get to the postseason. Those would be Sienega and Mountain View after Rocky starts. Brett Roberts and Mountain View looking to break a two game losing streak under a crescent moon against the Bobcats who also had lost two straight. Braden Cherry on the toss sweep here to Cole McFarland. He's going to start right, but he's going to come back left. You can't arm tackle this kid. That's a 20 yard touchdown. Sienega takes a seven nothing lead now. Don't hurt him there, please. First chance to see the Mountain Lions gunslinger William Howe will unload into Dylan Arvaio on the other end. That's 31 yards, and I think that's a Tiger, not a Mountain Lion, just saying. But Howe let this one fly a little bit too much on him. Derek Bradley gets a hand on it. Josiah Parker with the interception. It was going to be that kind of night for the Mountain Lions. These dudes came to see number 11, Jimmy Diaz, make a play. So Jimmy Diaz, make a play. Braden Cherry providing the ball. Diaz high pointing it 39 yards to the red zone. Richie McCormick going to finish things off this time as the Bobcats silence the crowd in the black hole. Sienega wins big 35-16. Hey, it was a beautiful night near Sabino Canyon as the Sabercats hosted Push Ridge. These teams came in with a combined record of 9-3, and three, and Sabino High School would push forward strong against Push Ridge. Right off the bat, Cameron Hackwork will run it, and come on, Cameron, you can do it. Cameron, of course, also shows he can throw as well. How about Camden Gambrel with the diving catch? Sabino already leads 14 to zip, and how about Cameron Hackworth throwing it up Again, this time, Isaiah Aguirre is wide open. The Sabercats lead 20 to zip. This was all Sabino as the Sabercats move to 6-2 and two after the 27-16 victory. These two fine young women are responsible for homecoming night at CDO. 7-7 against Peoria. Ethan Crominga up the gut, 17 to the doorstep. That would lead to a touchdown. Fireworks and a Dorado's lead, but... On the ensuing kickoff, things got away from Canyon. There was not a whole lot of good covering of kicks in this game, period. And Isaac Moreno is going to go 82 yards for the touchdown. That is going to tie this game right back up. So let's bring out the Green Machine defense. And coming off the edge with speed is Caden Luke devouring the Panthers quarterback, Sebastian Carrillo. And then CDO QB1, Caden Dawes. Man, we saw some good gunslinging tonight. This is a touchdown to VJ King. That ended up being the game winner as CDO holds on for a 21-14 victory. Congratulations to Caden and Macy. You don't have to wait to the dance to find out. They are the king and queen of Canyon. Congrats to Coach Dustin Peace as well with that victory for CDO. All right, moving on. Coach Eric Rogers and Sal Point hosted Pinnacle High School from the Phoenix area. The Lancers were gunning for their fifth win in six games this season and hoping not to overlook a Pinnacle squad that had only won one game this year. On the horizon next week, a trip for Sal Point to take on unbeaten Desert View. Hey guys, let's go ahead and watch some TV, maybe some reruns of the Friday football fever all on the sidelines. Well, actually, that would be cool. But hey, South Point watching game film though, and on the field, Pinnacle strikes first. Zach Wren will find Deuce Robinson, the most recruited tight end in Arizona. That's a touchdown. Pinnacle jumps ahead seven zip. Coaches from Clemson and Washington were scouting him at the game, and they would see South Point also trying to move the ball. That was Anthony Wilhite busting forward for the first down. After that, Trayson Borgay will hand it to Wilhite again. South Point was moving the ball, but the field goal attempt would be missed. And when Pinnacle got the ball back, check out Zach Wren about to take a helmet to the head. And he will still find Deuce Robinson. Right on the money, honey. That'll be a TD. South Point's losing 14 to zip. And the Lancers comeback attempt falls short by a touchdown. 28-21. Coach Robert Bonillas in Desert View 
host South Point next Friday. And for Midtown, let's head out to my neighborhood, Catalina Foothills. The Titans would host Saguaro High School tonight. The combined records for these two teams coming in was just one win and seven losses. And at the Foothills, the senior section, no problem getting into the swing of things. Check out all that energy. Second quarter, Saguaro up 6 zip. Josiah Bean going to put this ball on the ground. Saguaro's Logan Stell fast to pick that ball up and run with it. Nice job, Logan. Still second quarter, Connor Smith. Going to launch the ball and check out Noe Medina. Going to make that beautiful catch right there. That's a touchdown. And the Falcons then going to get it to Marcel Dean. Another touchdown for the kids from my neighborhood. They hang on for the one point win. Hey, we are far from over with after the break. We continue our end of coverage of high school football right here in the old Pueblo. Stick around. We're going to have our play of the night. Something you don't want to miss for sure. Plus, Flowing Wells and Rincon went toe to toe this evening, Paul. And we head back to the south side where Coach Bonillas and Desert View had a homecoming to remember against Long Island. Friday football fever. Boxes off. <laughs>